Z390 is finally amongst us and so is Asus's Maximus 6 Hero Formula, a step up from the Z370 Maximus Hero 5 that you may already have. Since this is a flagship board, we will be putting it through a lot of different tests and telling you guys if it's worthy of that flagship title. But with that aside, let's get straight into the meat and potatoes of this review. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Right here is a 10-phase VRM design implemented on this board using Vichy Silicon X SI6739 dual-stage MOSFETs. Now, I couldn't find a whole lot of info on these MOSFETs, but I will say when it comes to overclocking and the real-world results, this is where it really matters. And honestly, this board has done better than any Z370 board, as well as doing better than other Z390 counterparts when I tested it with a particular CPU that puts out a lot of heat. And it did so well to the point where it was using less power, it was also getting good overclocks and keeping them stable at certain levels. For the chokes, they've implemented 60 amp solutions, and then after that, you've got your Nichicon FP10K capacitors on board, which will do a mighty fine job for whatever you need it to do, especially if you're on air or water overclocks. This thing is not gonna have a problem at all. Right beside that eight pin, you've also got an additional four pin to give the CPU extra power if it so needs it. Moving through the board itself, you've got eight PWM fan headers as well as one three pin for a water cooler. So nine fan headers in total. We've also got two RGB outs for four pins and also two RGB outs for the three pin solutions. Asus have also implemented a power button as well as a Dr. Debug LED light, which is great for LN2 overclockers. On the rear of the board, you also get the clear CMOS button and the switch BIOS for the dual BIOS implemented on this board. And then when it comes to the DDR4 memory overclocks, they say they support up to 4,400 megahertz. Unfortunately, the memory I had on here only went up to 3,700 megahertz. I couldn't test past that uh, because I don't have extreme overclocking tools and also really good memory to test that. But in terms of overclocking the memory, it did the best again out of any board that I've had here in terms of overclocking that particular set of memory. And then glancing a little bit further down the board, you've got your implementation of the ROG heatsink, which can be controlled with the Aura software. And you can even control that in the BIOS itself, setting in different modes if you don't wish to install the software on Windows. The shroud at the top will also glow with RGB lighting. So you do have two different zones here on the board itself. Besides that, we've got three PCI 16X slots, although only the top one itself is true 16 slot. The one below that is eight times, and then the one at the bottom is four times. And if it's one thing I do have to pick a bone with the Z390 in general, which is not Asus's fault, is that they've only included one 16 speed slot. I'd like to see the CPUs themselves support more lanes and also the motherboards have two 16 speed slot solutions. So you can then link up two RTX 2080 Ti's for example, in 32 times for both those graphics cards. But there's also an additional three one X slots of PCIe coverage, as well as having two NVMe PCIe 3.04 speed slots that do have heat sinks on both the slots themselves. When testing the bottom and the primary slot for this, we notice the temperatures do go down quite a bit. On the heatsink itself, we had 48 degrees when running a 100 gigabyte stress test. And with the heatsink off, it was 91 degrees on the thermal imaging camera. Also on the software, we reported 61 degrees versus 92 degrees itself. So this heatsink is doing a great job of cooling down NVMe uh, M.2 flash-based storage devices. However, moving over to the right of the board with the Supreme FX audio solution, a lot of you guys tell me you love the audio testing that gets done around Tech Yes City. And so analyzing this solution here, they've got a 192 kilohertz, 24-bit uh, ADC solution implemented. And then also for the audio out, you've got 32-bit, 192 kilohertz solution. That's with the supported rates. Uh, but also when we're testing the audio itself for things like the frequency response curve, especially in something that normal people will listen to, we noticed that the roll off here below seven Hertz was only like 1.4 decibels. And then the frequency response curve after that was incredibly flat. So this is a phenomenal implementation of onboard audio. The mic import itself also had a noise suppression that was clearly visible when we turned it up to a 100 volume 30 plus 30 dB, you can see that there was a little spike when we tried to change it, which does indicate that there is noise suppression, but it will give you a clear signal. Just don't use it for professional recordings, but if you're using it for gaming, your mates are gonna be able to hear you absolutely fine with no noise whatsoever. Move over to the left and right channel balance. We had only a 0.1 to 0.2 decibel difference between the left and right channel, which again is phenomenal values. And then moving over to the crosstalk numbers, they were minus 80 dB and lower. 
And this is the thing with the uh, volume here. The volume is quite strong, stronger than previous generations of motherboards. So you will be able to power a uh, pretty uh, hungry headphones that need that extra power. But also after the volume level of 90, uh, just like a lot of other solutions, there is a slight bit of crosstalk leak into the right channel. This is a very common problem, I guess, on the uh, ALC Realtek 1220 solution that a lot of uh, motherboard manufacturers implement on their motherboards. Though in a nutshell, if you're getting this motherboard for the audio, just set the volume to 90 or below and you'll have happy days. Now before we get back to the overclocking and also the BIOS, we'll quickly take a look at the rear input output. Eight USB slots, one of those being a Type-C, display port and HDMI port outs, PS2 out, as well as the clear CMOS and BIOS switch buttons, as we mentioned before. You've got a wireless solution, AC included, which comes with its own antenna. Tested the speeds of the onboarded included NIC, and that was fine all the way up to one gigabit per second, as well as having manual 5.1 surround and an optical out port, which I hope Motherboard manufacturers never get rid of this port. I absolutely love it. Anyway, overclocking now. Let's roll things back now to the overclocking. And as I said before, I can only talk about a uh, CPU which put out a lot of heat at this very point in time. And this motherboard, the VRM and the heatsink, the heatsink weighs about 300 grams. And when we looked at it with the VRM thermal imaging camera with an overclock on a particular CPU at a particular speed, uh, we managed to see that the VRM was going around 50 degrees uh, this was out of the box. The VRM itself was only going up manually on the thermal imaging camera to around 56 degrees. So this was phenomenal performance on this implementation from ASUS, as well as the power efficiency being very good when I compared it to other boards here. So they've definitely got things right in terms of the magic behind the implementation of the hardware on this board itself. But when we move on to the BIOS, this is where things really don't need to get any better. ASUS's implementation of their BIOS has all the features you would want for overclocking, our LLC levels as well as recommendations, as well as preset overclocks for memory, and also overclocking to things like a five gigahertz. They've got that included too. So in a nutshell itself, the Z390 Maximus Hero 6 is definitely gonna be the board you will wanna get if you want flagship performance. Now, keep in mind, this thing will come at a premium. I actually don't know the official pricing yet, but expect it to be maybe slightly more than the current Z370 Maximus 5, which currently goes for around about 300 US. In Australia, it's about 400 Aussie. And I really can't fault this board for anything in particular, maybe other than the price performance, uh, which on a premium flagship motherboard, you're always gonna pay a premium. So everything from the onboard audio to the VRM to the BIOS feature set, it's all practically perfect. And ASUS do get this right. They know what they're doing when it comes to making motherboards. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Maximus 6 Hero. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also stay tuned on this channel for more coverage with Z390s and particular CPUs. They are coming up. I look forward to reading your comments and opinions as always in the comment section below, but also on that note, let us know what you think of this motherboard and also let us know what you think of the whole Z390 release and chipset. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.